So I now have the drum microphones as separate audio files, just like I would have if I'd been in Studio One of Air Studios with Eddie Kramer engineering Jack Mitchell playing a vintage 1970s Ludwig kit that had been set up in the same way as it would have for John Bonham when he recorded with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Hi, I hope you're all well, or if you're new, thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Matt from Distant Sun Studios, and today is the fourth part in the video series called Inside the Mix. If you've missed any of the earlier episodes and would like to check them out, I'll put links in the description below. OK, let's go. Today we're looking at the tracking and mixing techniques that I've used on the drums, and you may be surprised to learn that they were actually recorded using a MIDI drum kit. Although my preference would always be to use an acoustic kit when recording the drums, at the time of recording this track, using a MIDI kit was the most practical and affordable solution. Let's take a quick listen to the final mix sound. Recording with a MIDI drum kit has also got some additional benefits. For example, you can audition for a preferred kit sound when mixing the track, and you can easily change the arrangement of a song without the issue of any ambient spill that may well have been captured in an acoustic recording. Having said all of that, the most important part of recording any instrument should always be the performance of the player. It may sound obvious, but making sure that the artist feels as comfortable as possible will help them to give their best performance. In this case, I was extremely fortunate to be working with an incredible drummer, Jack Mitchell, who's been Johnny Marr's drummer for over the last 10 years. I'd sent the music to Jack in advance, so he had a good idea of what I was looking for before he came to record the session. As we were using a MIDI kit, the setup time was pretty quick. Technically, everything was tested and ready to go prior to Jack arriving. Jack just then had to make a few adjustments to the position and the sensitivity of the drum pads to suit his playing style. As an engineer, my main job was to give him a good balance in the cue mix so that he could hear everything that he needed to really get inside the track. As far as the production went, Jack had the foundation of the song down very quickly in a few takes. We then separately recorded a few fills that I'll be able to try out later when mixing. I was just in the middle of editing today's video and then by chance I had a message from Jack. He's been following this video series and kindly offered to answer any questions that you may have either about recording this song or his work with Johnny Marr on the road or in the studio. Just leave your questions in the comments below and in a few weeks time I'll record a separate Q&A with Jack and I'll do my best to get through as many of the questions as I can. OK, back to today's video. Once recorded, I loaded the MIDI into Superior Drummer 3 from Toontrack for the drum samples. If you haven't used Superior Drummer 3 before, it really is an incredibly powerful program that will let you adjust the drums in pretty much any way that you would like. However, as I mentioned earlier, my preference would have been to record the drums acoustically. So this is how I use Superior Drummer to really bring the drums inside the mix. The samples that come with Superior Drummer 3 are incredibly good, but for my taste in this track, almost too good and polished if that makes sense. I was after a drum sound that would be a slightly more modern version of a late 60s or 1970s vintage kit. I also wanted the track to have a live feel, very much like the band had recorded everything together in the same room. So I found a Superior Drummer expansion pack called The Legacy of Rock, where Toontrack had worked with the legendary Eddie Kramer recreating the drum setups that he had used with Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, The Rolling Stones and The Beatles. They recorded the samples in Studio One of Air Studios in London, using vintage drums, mics, preamps, the whole deal. This was perfect, exactly the vibe that I was looking for. Inside Superior Drummer, it's very easy to audition presets like this. For this track I chose to use Eddie Kramer's Sparkle Mono Ambience preset. This preset used a vintage Ludwig kit from the 1970s. 
Another thing that you can do that's really cool is once you've chosen your preferred recording space, in this case the Mono Ambience preset, you can then swap out the whole kit or any individual kit pieces until you get the sound that you would like for your production. I then used a feature in Superior Drummer that was just perfect for what I want to achieve in the mix. By selecting the track button in the bottom left hand corner of the plugin, you can then select Bounce, Export Song as Audio Files. This then exports the individual microphones as audio WAV files so you can import them into your session to mix with. Firstly, just make sure that you select all of the MIDI that you would like to export in the song. I chose to export the audio files at 24-bit to give me the highest quality. In the Advanced tab, I selected to bounce the microphone channels as audio and also force enabled bleed. The bleed is the ambient spill that would have been captured in the close microphones when recording. Finally, select a folder to record the audio files into and then click bounce. That's it. Done. So I now have the drum microphones as separate audio files, just like I would have if I'd been in Studio One of Air Studios, with Eddie Kramer engineering Jack Mitchell playing a vintage 1970s Love Big kit that had been set up in the same way as it would have for John Bonham when he recorded with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby! Yeah. <laughs> As ever, it's been an absolute pleasure, and thanks so much for watching. Please continue to leave me any comments or questions that you may have below. I read everything, and I will always do my best to reply to everyone. Next time, I'll go through the mixing process for the drums, looking at EQ, compression, and creating that ambient space for the song. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe to be notified of new videos from us in the future. It really does help the channel. I'm Matt from Distant Sun Studios, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.